Uh, yeah, my name is Jordan Dreyer, and I sing in a band called La Dispute. And uh, we got a show coming up in Sydney on the 22nd of November. Beautiful, Jordan. Thanks for joining us this afternoon, this evening for you. Yeah, thanks for having me. No worries, brother. So La Dispute hit Australia on November 22nd as part of the Five Nights Only Tour, which is celebrating the 10th anniversary of your 2014 album, Rooms of the House, where you're going to be playing the album in full, plus a collection of other songs, mate. So we know pretty much what to expect musically and song-wise, but what can fans expect from the show otherwise? Oh, my goodness. I think fans can expect, or I would hope they can expect, uh, a feeling of catharsis, a feeling of uh, shared grief and celebration. That sounds really dramatic, but the record <laughs> deals with pretty intense themes. And I think that uh, we're pretty committed to making our shows uh, feel like a dialogue between performer and artist or performer and audience. So really just hoping to engage with people and, and connect over the different reasons we all connect to the record. Fantastic. And as the name suggests, mate, like you're only playing five shows in total around the world with Australia being the final show. So firstly, why did you decide to just do five shows in five different countries? Like would have been a lot easier doing a few in one country. True. True. Uh, you know, it's kind of, uh, manifold answers to this question for, uh, starters. We spent our first, Two years out of COVID, post shutdown, uh, touring for an anniversary that we missed during said shutdown. So we came out of COVID and did a two years late, 10 year anniversary for the record that preceded Rooms of the House, uh, which was really rewarding and I think a really excellent way to come out of not having the opportunity to play shows for the longest period of time that we've had since we started almost 20 years ago. But um, made us a little wary of running it back with a different record and just doing back-to-back -back nostalgia tours felt a little cheap. Mm -hmm. um, but we also wanted to play some shows because it's a record that means a lot to us. So this was kind of the happy medium. We're also working on a new record. So I think we decided it was more beneficial to dedicate our time to moving to the next chapter in our band's history and to not dwell too much on the past and yep. to celebrate this in an intimate way and to kind of say thank you to some of the places that have meant the most to us over the years. So um, just decided we'd limit it to five, which was hard to do because once you add five, you start thinking, well, yeah. what about this sixth city? What about this seventh city? And eventually just had to like, cut it off and say this is what we're doing and this will give us the opportunity to work on new music and still get to celebrate a milestone very cool so how did you actually pick the five countries like was it where the album sold best or where it was best received or was it more random than that no uh i mean it was pretty clear from the beginning that we would i mean obviously we would play a show in the u.s um, and decided to do that in the city that's meant the most to us in our history, the city that we're from, a place in Michigan called Grand Rapids. So that was an easy one. Um, Germany and the UK have always been really great for us and to us, and we have a lot of friends in both countries, so those two are pretty easy. Um, always had a really great relationship with our fans in the Netherlands, and the venue that we played is one of our absolute favorites in the world, and Australia has been a massive part of our band's history. It's the first country we toured outside of the U S and Canada. We did Australia before we did Europe, which is pretty unconventional for American touring bands and really fostered a strong relationship with the people that we toured with early on in Australia. And I would say outside of the U S Australia has kind of been the country that's really been the best to us and where we have the most friends. So, uh, it was hard to not do more than one show mm -hmm. in Australia, but ultimately had to think about the time we had to uh, work on the new record. And so, but Australia was, it was pretty easy to pick. We were going to do a Sydney show, a Melbourne show or a Brisbane show, and we weren't sure which, and this is just how it worked out logistically, but fucking stoked. So cool. Uh, you've already done the shows in London, Amsterdam and Berlin with Grand Rapids USA on September 28th before you come to Australia. So how have the shows been going? How have those three shows gone down? Oh, they've been great. 
they've been really excellent. You know, the record we toured before is kind of, I guess the one for a lot of people, but I think the people who connect most directly to this record, to Rooms of the House, have a really special connection to it. So uh, all three of the shows that we've played so far have just felt very connected and very intimate. And um, it seems like people really, the people who, like I said, the people who love this record, I think really connect to specific aspects of it and they and they really feel powerfully about it in, in the way that we do also. And it's the beautiful thing about writing music that speaks to the human experience and to these kind of grandiose themes of life and death and love and mm -hmm. what have you. So they've just felt really good. They felt really like grounding. Yeah. So, and is it, difficult actually playing the whole album mate like when you wrote it initially i can't imagine you ever thought that you'd have to play the whole lot one day so was it difficult getting it down uh i would say i mean speaking personally uh as the vocalist of a band and somebody who has a tendency to write a lot more words than he should <laughs> um, this record's been a little bit easier than the one previous to it uh it's shorter for one and there's more low moments there's more quiet moments so in in in, in a, the fitness pers from a fitness perspective it's been easier to play these songs <laughs> um, and this record i think is just kind of built for it i mean i think all our records we try to conceive of a whole piece you know we're not like a write songs and stick them together kind of band so much as we plot things out and kind of work off a template so every record we have we intend to flow as a whole piece so even if we're not actively thinking that we're going to have to play it front to back, although I'm sure it was in the back of our heads, I think because we just think of how the record is going to flow song to song, section to section. And, and of course it's like a little, it's almost, well, it's, it's almost easier when we have the transitions already built in than if we have to like think about how we're going to move from a song off one record to a song off another record. So it's it kind of like takes a little bit of the thought out of it, which is not a bad thing. <laughs> true, true, true. So 10 years on, mate, like, what, what does Rooms of the House mean to you still personally? It means a lot more than I expected it to, if I'm to be honest. Um, I keep mentioning it, but just doing back-to-back -back anniversary stuff, you really like, especially getting to 10 years when you never really thought a year ahead of you when you were younger and reaching that milestone, I guess, sort of makes you think more about what the record means to you and what it's meant to you, your history and your career. And so there's like a way in which you dive deeper than you did since the time you spent putting the songs down and, and writing them. So like this one in particular, I think deals with a lot of themes that maybe we hadn't even experienced directly at the age that we wrote it and in the time between have um, experienced them. So, so there's a way in which rooms of the house playing these songs again, thinking about them has um, been pretty therapeutic um, because they are songs that deal with collapse and relationships collapsing and, and to have, you know, lived complicated and difficult personal experiences um, in the time between has like made this record resonate in a way that I don't think it really even did when we wrote it. Right. Very cool. Now there's also another reason why you're finishing the tour in Australia. It's because you plan to actually stay in Sydney and record album number five, mate. So why choose Sydney to record on? You could like, what else you got there? Amsterdam, Berlin, London, like they're pretty cool places. Why choose Sydney? <laughs> You know, we, so we have a bandmate who lives in Australia and has for quite a few years uh, met his wife in Australia. They're married and have a kid. So, and he's sort of, um, I would say, our in-house producer and kind of always yeah. has been. Um, so, you know, there was part of it was working out how much time we would need to record the record, when we were going to be playing which country, so there was some logistical consideration to the fact that we kind of knew we'd have to do the European shows earlier on. Mm. Um, but we also had connections in Australia and um, because Brad is kind of 
uh, are, you know, the, the decision maker or not, I wouldn't say the decision. We all collectively make the decision, but I think because we trust Brad's judgment and he had connections and uh, access to a great facility and a great location. And, you know, we also like try to alter external variables when we're writing and recording to see how it affects the end product. So it was a new experience and it was, that was part of the decision too. It was just like, let's try being somewhere else in a different country and in a different environment and different weather, et cetera. So like there were a lot of things that went into playing it or to doing it, but um, yeah, we just also, you know, I keep saying it, but we love Australia. So <laughs> it'll be fun to have a record we wrote all over the world and then recorded in Australia. Very cool. And you guys are always a band that experiments with your sound from record to record. So what's this one going to sound like? Have you got a direction of it yet or is that sort of more come in the studio? No, we've got, we've been working pretty full bore for a while when possible. So every show we've played, we've tacked on additional time in the last year and change. So we've been, uh, we're, we're, we're pretty far along the process. So I think we have a decent idea of what the sonic profile will be. I think having the opportunity to go back and revisit some things that worked really well for us in the past has influenced how we've approached things on this record. So I think there's a little bit of, I think sort of every record that we've done has the kind of thing we, we, we intentionally pursued. And I think you'll see a little bit of each of them on this record. I do think that this record is going to be uh, maybe comparatively more bleak, which sounds real dire because there's some bleakness throughout <laughs> our catalog. But I think that, uh, you know, again, speaking to environmental influence, just you sort of inevitably absorb the tension of the world. And I think that's kind of pushed us in a heavier direction and in a maybe maybe more dark direction. So we'll, we'll see. There's still, you know, we've got some time left and some writing to do to get across the finish line. So we'll see how things change going forward. I think the big thing is that we're really like keeping everything on the table, trying to do some new things, not just sonically, but production wise and instrumentally and just trying to like tap into some things that have worked, but, but put new spins on it and, and maybe, uh, fuck around a little more, maybe be a little more experimental. So do you think like, even maybe on a subliminal level, but the fact that you've been playing rooms at the house for these shows and you're actually living with that album at the moment, like, do you think that's going to seep into the next one a bit? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think that there's a possibility in some ways, like I said, I think because we, we have been thinking about like, Oh, this worked really well on wildlife and this worked really well on, rooms of the house and this works really well in panorama there's going to be some of that and maybe because we've been more immediately interacting with rooms you'll see some some uh, kind of rooms fingerprints but i think just because we're in a very different place in our life and because yeah. the concepts in the record are substantially different i think that it's going to be its own thing for sure well cool. now before we let you go mate i've started a new new little segment up in my interviews where I've gone trolling through your Facebook accounts and dug up some old photos. And I'm going to <laughs> chuck up on the screen and just ask you to let me know what's going on there. So this is the first one I found. I like, did did you guys have a big night the night before that? Or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we, well, you know, we're generally pretty sleepy guys, <laughs> so, but we also, you know, we love each other clearly. So we're just, we're just snuzzling up. Ah, that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> well, this one sort of goes one step further than that, but what's going on there? <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, I think that is on the way to Brazil, I want to say. There have been a lot of days like that in this band's history. You well, that was from lot. 2019. Oh, so. Okay, so, yeah, that might have been that. Uh I think, you know, we probably were coming from one country to another country and we were even more sleepy in that one than we were in the last photo. It doesn't look Clearly. comfortable at all, bro. No, I think that explains a lot of the pain I feel at 37. <laughs> so along like, those lines, what, what's the worst place you ever slept then? Worst place? Yeah. Oh, goodness, how much time do you have? <laughs> uh, I mean, for the first 
I don't know how many years uh, we toured in, you know, playing basement shows, passing the hat around for donations. So we slept on a lot of pretty seedy punk house floors and uh, a lot of places that were full of people who were not ready to go to bed when we were. So we've slept among, you know, thralls of party goers and under ping pong tables and what have you. So we've slept in some pretty terrible places. We've avoided most, I think more than a lot of bands sleeping in the van, which I really appreciate. We had some nights like that, but for the most part, we actually found somebody who was willing to put us up for the night, but that leads to some pretty awful sleeping situations for sure. I can imagine. And that's the story for another day, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the floor. All right, Jordan. Well, thanks very much for your time, bro. Love Dispute is in Australia Friday, November 22nd, playing at the Roundhouse in Sydney for the very final show of the Five Nights Only Tour. So I'm going to do my best to get down there and have a beer with you, brother. But if yeah, not, please. take it easy and best of luck.